Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, I am Zach Friedman, and this is the P5 Data Glove, the ultimate 3D virtual controller. It's sort of like a power glove, except it's cyberpunk as f So this one came in original packaging, straight from CompUSA or Circuit City or something. It comes with a right-handed glove, they're all righty models, an infrared base station that uh, does the processing and triangulates the position, this proprietary connector that hardwires the glove to the base station on your desk, a set of replacement finger rings, some ancient video games, and a driver CD windows only. The glove is a little wider than a person's hand. That's because it's got these flanges that uh, hold extra LED emitters. These are infrared lights that pulse at specific rates, and that allows the tower to triangulate the position of the glove. Putting it on is uh, real simple. Just put palm on it, loop this over, and hook it right here. Slip the rings onto your fingers, and Bob's your uncle. You'll notice that the thumb has a little bit of extra articulation, uh, which really goes a long way to make it more comfortable. The thing is a lot lighter than it looks, and it actually moves around the hand. You can see as I make different gestures, it's being pulled forward and backward, and that's normal. Um, of course, the outer, di the outer end of your finger is, uh, well, the diameter is changing, so, this thing is built with a tremendous amount of give. But the question, of course, is how well does it work? Our test bit is a Windows 7 VM running the most recent community drivers. Let's plug it in, let's switch it on, and let's jack into the matrix. When you're not playing a video game with the thing, it operates in mouse mode. Uh, I can move my hand to move the cursor, I can use my index finger to right click, I can use my middle finger to left click. And uh, this will be a good test of its precision and its accuracy. You can see that the finger detection, the clicking, is uh, very precise and very repeatable. But I can't come even close to saying that for uh, the movement. The positional and orientation tracker is just the worst. It's a miracle if this thing actually goes where you intend it. Um, I was lucky enough to hit a minimize menu and disagree with these terms and conditions, but now I can't seem to get it over to the start menu. This is not actually a ready-to-go uh, input device for virtual reality. If you bought this thing to try to use it in Oculus Rift, you are going to be super disappointed. So it's kind of useless out of the box, but we don't care, we're hardware hackers. Let's bust it open and improve it. Three screws are under the foam pad, the fourth is under the thumb. Let's open up these tabs, and uh, because the two halves are connected with some hot glue, let's get a knife in there and gently work them apart. Once we open up a little room, we can finish the job with a screwdriver. Let's get in there and pop out that flat flex cable. The only thing holding the two halves together is this infrared emitter, so let's remove it. Let's dive into the glove board. Date stamp 27th of August 2002, a full 14 years old at the time of this recording. Uh, what's neat is that there's no smarts anywhere on this. There's no ADC, there's no processor. It's just a bunch of random discretes that somehow manages to read all these sensors and fire all the emitters. We've got this very heavy gauge flat flex cable. It's gotta be at least like a one ounce pourer. Um, and that's connected to uh, these drive transistors. And those things are being pulsed, uh, you'll see, but they're all being controlled by the base station. Over here we've got our socket to connect to the finger sensors. Uh, those flat flex, uh, the flat flex cable uh, connects in there and those 10 resistive sensors are sent inexplicably to this row of diodes. This is where things get a little sketchy, and I'd really have to dig around here to figure out how the hell this thing works, but those signals feed directly into those diodes. There's no voltage divider anywhere. Flipping to the other side, all these signals are leading to and from these two 74HC164s, and these are shift registers. These are designed to work with digital signals. So it's pretty easy to understand how they're going to work with the infrared emitters and how they're going to read all the buttons, but how are they going to read some analog flex sensors? Maybe they're like like acts like an ADC or something. 
whatever it is, it's multiplexing all these things together, sending it through this this LM358 op amp, and then all of that's going back through the wires uh, into that proprietary connector where it's the base station that's doing all the processing. So there's nothing really happening on the glove board itself. If you wanted to read it or interface with it, you just have to do a little reverse engineering. But I think we can do a little better. Let's take a look at the really interesting bit, the fingers. The connector here is a standard size. Uh, if you check the video description, I will, uh, tell a I will tell a tested, known working matching connector so that you can hook this thing directly up to your own project. We have a little, uh, little <laughs> permanent marker. Uh, from some of the factory. What's uh, what's interesting is that this bit is completely uninsulated. Uh, this is not this is not a reinforcing bit. This little seam here. Uh, this is actually where the insulation stops. So I should probably stop getting my fingers all over it because it'll start to corrode almost immediately. These are of course resistive touch sensors. Um, the resistance varies around 40k. Uh, I use 47k resistors in the voltage dividers to read it. Worked fine. Uh, we can disassemble this thing even further for further hacking. So uh, let's do so. Little force never hurt anybody. Beautiful. So here we go. Now uh, you're starting to see a bit of interesting technology. The there is no circuit board in the bottom half. Every one of these is connected together through the central hub. It's all one giant flat flex, both the cable and the resistive flex sensors, which is really cool. This one common line uh, connects to all of them, and each one actually has two resistors in it. Uh, one of them is uh, or over, around the knuckle, and one of them is um, near the tip of the finger. And I suppose it's doing some averaging uh, to try to get a gross finger motion. The, uh, the, the bounciness on the thumb is caused by the flat flex itself. Now, flat flex is not the most durable material, and it's not really intended to be sheared, which is like moved side to side, and it's certainly not intended to be flexed that often. Especially not this. Uh, this will delaminate and come apart into layers after only a few hundred activations. So the lifespan of this device is inherently uh, reduced. So I decided to bring this thing up to speed. I ripped out all the electronics, uh, stripped off all the components from the glove board, and replaced it with a TNC 3.1. The reason why we're using a TNC is because it's got USB HID built right in. So this thing can act as a keyboard and mouse and we don't even need any drivers. We can hook directly up to our heads-up display of choice. Got an uh, Adafruit FPC stick with a one millimeter header to connect to the bottom half. Little transistor to drive a vibrating motor for some tactile feedback. I took out all the infrared LEDs. We're not gonna need them anymore. Replaced one of them with an RGB LED. Kept the strain relief in the cable, except only using four of them. We can connect that straight to the USB pins on the Teensy. On the other half, uh, the, other, the other end, I sliced the proprietary cable off from place with just a standard USB. So from the outside, it's indistinguishable from the real deal, but uh, it's got a lot of smarts. Oh, I almost forgot. Buried deep within here, right at the bottom, is a central hub uh, connected to a bunch of modern a bunch of modern accelerometers and sensors and whatnot. The central hub is a hardware DMP. It's a motion processor that takes accelerometer, gyroscope, compass, and fuses them together. And this is especially important because it outputs quaternions, which allow us to do uh, allow us to do rotation. So all this stuff will let us keep the biggest strength of the P5, which was those finger flex sensors, while discarding the worst part, which was the motion sensor. And, uh, well, all is left is to write the code. Stay tuned for a future episode in which we'll improve this to recognize gestures, to launch apps with ninja hand signs, and to actually fulfill the, dr the dream of being the perfect, the most badass t controller for a wearable device. Until then, let me know if there's another crazy piece of technology that you want me to check out and improve. And as always, I will see you in the future. Huh!